All right. So figurative language in handful of dates. A little bit of background here. So the story takes place in Sudan. It follows um, the narrator, who's a who's a boy, probably between ten and fourteen. Um, we get the sense that he's youngish, um, maybe even not quite a teenager yet. Um, who has a close relationship with his grandfather, um, but there's this question about how their relationship developed and deteriorated between their neighbor Masood and the grandfather. Okay, so again we're looking at this story to look for examples of figurative language um, to talk about how they might relate to coming of age and what they might tell us about coming of age. All right, so the first thing I want you to think about are um, what kind of characters are the grandfather and Masood? This is something we talked a lot about. We talked about what the grandfather values in life versus what Masood values in life. Um, and if, if you look in the text, there's plenty of evidence to show what the grandfather values and what Masood values. Um, so the first way to think about this story in, in terms of symbolism or metaphor or figurative language is to think of the characters as standing in for larger ideas themselves. So what type of person does the grandfather represent? What type of person does Masood represent? What path in life does the grandfather represent? What path in life does Masood represent? And furthermore, what does the decision that the boy makes in this story as to who he's going to be close with, whose example he's going to follow, what does that tell us about his own personal process of coming of age, his own personal process of growth? All right. Um, so that said, there are a couple places where we can look at um, specific examples of figurative language. The first and most obvious one should be the one that you think of is one that we talked about a lot um, at the end here, um, where he's talking about the dates that he's eaten and the dates that he's spewed up that his grandfather has given him. You had a discussion journal question asking you how this act could be symbolic. Um, and so you can definitely use this passage um, and that answer to help you in your final essay. Um, because the, the reason the boy vomits up the dates um, and you know his reasoning behind that have directly to do with his process of growth, um, the type of person he's realizing that he wants to be, the type of person that he's realizing he doesn't want to be. Another part in here that I think could help you is this paragraph right above it. This is right after um, the grandfather has told Masood, you're 50 pounds in debt to me still. Um, and then they're dividing up the dates and actually taking them away. Um, the donkeys and the camels are all screaming, um, so it's a chaotic scene. Um, and then here is this section where you had another DJ question about asking, what does this mean that, Mas that the narrator felt himself drawing closer to Masood? Um, and he was reaching out to Masood as if he wanted to touch his garment. Um, and you had various different answers for what that means. Um, uh, so again, remember our discussion about um, influence. There's also this line here that I really like 
I heard him make a noise in his throat, like the rasping of a lamb being slaughtered. Okay, um, so that's a, that's a clear simile here. Um, the Masood's painful sound that he's making is being compared to a lamb being slaughtered. So Masood is being compared to a lamb being slaughtered, a lamb being sacrificed. So if you're looking at this image, you have to think about, okay, so if Masood is the lamb being slaughtered, who is it in the story that's doing the slaughtering? Who's harming Masood? Um, and remember when you're interpreting this that the boy is the narrator. So whatever you see in this story is an observation coming from the boy. So the boy is the one that's noticing this, that the that the neighbor Masood is making this sound like a slaughtered lamb. Um, and so what does that mean? Another way to ask this is, what generally happens in the world when people like the grandfather come up against people like Masood? Again, what does the grandfather value? What does Masood value? What is the boy learning about each of those characters? What is the boy learning about what he wants? Another thing to talk about is, are, I mean, are the dates themselves? What do the dates represent? Um, so, first of all, the dates are a fruit. So, a fruit is something that's uh, rife with symbolism. Um, can mean a lot of different things. The phrase, uh, the fruits of my labor, come to, comes to mind when we look at this story. Um, the title of the story is obviously a handful of dates. And the dates are important in the story to both Masood and to the grandfather. And both of them see the dates in a very different way, right? Uh, and again, when we're looking at figurative language, when we're looking at symbolism, we have to look at what does it do? What's the, the literal function of the object, the concrete object in the story? So what's the function of the dates in the story? What does the grandfather do with the dates? Um, well, you can look on these last couple pages and you can see what the grandfather does with the dates. What does Masood do with the dates? Um, that is right around here somewhere. Um, what does Masood do with the dates? What does the grandfather do with the dates? And what does this tell us about what each man is like? Um, more so, what does that tell us about what the boy is noticing about what each man is like? One last example is more of a theme in this story, and that's, that's water and the river. So, in this huge paragraph, as we've talked about before, um, oops, the, the boy, the narrator, is comparing his grandfather to the river. Um, but, and he loves his grandfather here at the beginning, uh, and he loves the river. He loves playing in the river. Um, and so to link both of these things uh, is significant. But if you trace the water imagery through this story, um, here, after the grandfather and the boy have their conversation, right after the boy says, I wish my grandfather wouldn't do what he said, there's this comparison that the narrator makes between Masood's voice his powerful laugh, and the gurgling of water. So now we have a, a positive um, comparison between water and Masood. Um, and if you, tr if you look at the rest of this story, um, more and more after this, the boy is looking at Masood. He's tracing Masood's actions, um, and he's looking at what Masood is doing. Um, and you can see the influence 
shift away from the grandfather towards Masood. And lastly, at the end here, um, the same spot in the river bank where at the beginning he was talking about, oh, this is a place for his information, uh, his imagination, um, and how he imagines his grandfather and a tribe of giants and all of that. At the end of the story, this place where he vomits up the dates that his grandfather gave him, it's the same spot in the river bank. Um, so, what does all this have to do with coming of age? Um, that's for you to tell me.